So again, I'm Robert Smith. If you don't know me, I'm the town manager of the town of Windermere. The purpose of this video today is to go over some of the questions people have had over the Butler and 7th project, the drainage project, also to alleviate some of the concerns about people raising about the fact that the town's looking to widen all of the roads um, and you know just using the entire uh, 60 foot of right away. Um, hopefully at the end of this video you'll have your answers. If you don't have any answers, please feel free to contact my office. We're having a Zoom meeting on Monday night uh, at 645. Please go to the town website, Facebook, uh, Instagram page, you'll get the information on that. Uh, but the purpose of today's video is to actually show you what our intent is for this roadway. Now, to get a better perspective of exactly how much the 60 feet is, and we're going to be interrupted a couple times by some of the traffic on this roadway. If you come out on site, the actual right away line starts here. And when you come over here and look this way, and for everybody that's in the town of Windermere, if you want to know what your right away line is, measure probably 25 feet from your garage or your front door, whatever is the closest point to the actual roadway. So 25 feet from that is pretty much where the right of way line is if you constructed your home, again, according to whatever the setback was. But the right of way line right here starts here and it goes all the way over to the last pole that's over there. Now, when we first talk about the entire 60 feet of right of way, you know, town council, they wanted to make sure that we maintain the dirt roadways because that's the life and charm of the town of Windermere. Staff completely agrees. Um, and the direction of town council was to utilize the right of way and maintain the dirt roadways while also maintaining the stormwater flow on those roadways by utilizing the minimum widths and the minimum standards as much as possible. So as you can tell, it's a pretty arduous task. You want to make sure that you're maintaining a new roadway, putting in some utilities, and taking care of your stormwater, but you don't want to change anything. Um, so that's why we have the engineers, myself, Public Works, we all try to you know, wrap our heads around what we can do. Um, but what we came up with is again, meeting minimum standards um, so we can actually accomplish what we want to do with both the Butler and 7th Project and probably coincidentally will happen with the Bessie Project. Now understand that these are the only two projects that are under uh, review right now. And the reason that we have to meet minimum standards is because that both of these projects are funded through federal grants. Now the town received pretty much about $3 million for West 2nd Avenue, the Bessie Project, and the Butler Project. And by doing so, we agreed to meet the federal standards and the Green Book standards, which is the Florida standards, that we have to maintain an 18-foot wide roadway, nine-foot lanes either way. So that's why we have an 18-foot dirt road. So let's go ahead and show you exactly what we're talking about for 7th, and then we'll show you what we're going to be doing about Butler. But as you can see, if we started right here, we would be taking off a lot of landscaping and we would be taking out this large tree right here, this oak tree. Um, as we said before, the last thing we want to do is take out any of the trees. So what we did was, the type of right of way dimensions that we're going to be uh, doing as far as the typical section is that you're going to start with a three foot shoulder, which is a green book standard. That's all going to be grass. Then you have the 18 foot dirt roadway. Then you have a six foot shoulder, which is going to double as the uh, utility corridor, meaning that you're gonna have the water line coming through that six foot. And then you have the swale system, which is actually grass as well. And it's gonna meet a four to one slope, and then it's going to be about three and a half foot, and then you go to another slope. So it's gonna be max about 1.5 to about two feet deep. So pretty much just figure out your grass is going to be like this if, you know, um, it's constructed in what you perceive as your front yard, which is actually the right away, but we respect the fact that you believe it's your front yard, and we're trying to do as minimal impact as possible. So when you come over here, and I want to thank Travis um, Thias as my uh, photographer today. So what we did, and you can see it out here, is we began the three-foot uh, shoulder right here so we would avoid impacting this tree. So the three foot shoulder would be right here. And when you take a look at it, from this point here for the three foot shoulder, it takes you all the way down to Fernwood Park, a straight shot. And again, that's if we're gonna maintain it as a straight roadway. But as you'll see in this little program, we're gonna meander it a little bit so we make sure we protect trees and we're trying to be fair and equitable for everybody. 
and also by the curving of the roadway, it also will slow down traffic because I know that was a, a big concern for people. So you have the three foot of the um, shoulder. So the actual roadway would start right here, which is pretty much, you see right here, it's about two feet off. And when it goes back over there, it's pretty much right on point with where the roadway exists right now. So if we go to the 18 feet, we come to right here. So as you can see again, the 18 feet matches right with the actual existing roadway. So when you take a look at this 18 feet, when people say that you're widening the roadways, come out here and take a look. Um, for this roadway specific, as well as a lot of the other roadways, um, we're not looking at actually widening them, but we're actually looking at improving them. Because what we're going to do is crown them up, I mean actually make it uh, a two foot slope to where the water will drain to the side, go over that six foot and then into the actual swell system. So with this section right here, this is where you're going to see the utility corridor, which is the six feet of grass. So you'll have grass going down this entire length all the way to Fernwood Park. Okay, so you have grass on either side, so it actually identifies exactly where the 18 feet is. Then you start the swale system. The swale system, again, is going to be 14 feet, and the reason for the 14 feet is to make sure that you maintain that slope, because the more you contract that 14 feet, the deeper that you go and it's pretty much either harder to maintain or it just doesn't aesthetically look good. Um, so when people were talking about the impacts of trees and the impacts of vegetation, again, we took that to heart and we wanted to make sure that we were doing the least amount of impacts as possible. If you actually look at the right-of-way line for the 1887 schoolhouse site, which I know is very near and dear to a lot of people's hearts, it actually starts right here. And if you look down this, if we actually use this entire right of way, we'd be taking out a ton of trees all the way down this line. Um, but we're not doing that because again, we want to make sure that we're protecting uh, the trees and the canopy uh, that we've all come to know and love. The actual swale system will start right here. This actually lines up with the tree line that's existing along um, 7th Avenue. So we're not going to be impacting any of the trees that are along this area. Anything from this pole to over to the gate area, this vegetation in here will be impacted. We'll be moving the actual fence line pretty much in line with the actual swale system. And what that does is not only will it give you a good idea of where the 1887 schoolhouse property actually starts, but it'll be a good barrier as well um, you know, for us to go ahead and replant the vegetation that you see over here. Now, a lot of people have said if you start removing vegetation, you know, then it looks like it's going to be a major highway, people are going to speed up. And we'll show you how that vegetation actually changes when we get down to where it's not going to have a negative impact that people think. But we are going to be replanting everything if this should be uh, approved by town council on Tuesday night on the 13th at 6 p.m. for 18 foot uh, wide um, dirt road. But anyway, again, it's going to be grass. It's going to be a low swale system, and then you have a six foot grass corridor, 18 foot of dirt road, and then three foot of shore. And what we'll do is we'll continue on and walking down. So when you look at these hedges right here, these will be moved back. And whatever we can't move, we'll replant. And whatever we replant, we'll make sure that it's a high enough growth or it kind of matches whatever the, the line of sight is right now. And also, after we save that big oak tree that's right over there, you can pretty much see that by us doing the line over here where it saves all these trees, the canopy is going to remain exactly the same. You're not going to see any difference in the actual tree canopy, which I know is very, again, near and dear to everybody's hearts. And the road width is going to be at or near the exact same width that it is right now. In some places, it's actually less. So when we go down here, as you can see, the right-of-way actually, actually 
widens up a little bit as far as anything that's within the actual right of way. So we do have the opportunity to move a foot or two if we need to, to make sure that we're out of whatever critical root zones that these trees may have. So keep going on this way. Again, when you go down Butler or uh, 7th Avenue, a good indication of where the actual right-of-way line is you can look over here and see where the driveway is. That's where the actual town property starts. Um, again, we understand that, you know, there's town property is where people perceive as their property, which is going up to the edge of the roadway. You landscape it, you put in uh, fences, whatever you have. Um, and that's why we want to make sure that we're respecting, you know, what you have in there and trying to, again, make a minimal impact as possible. But we can push it a little this way if we want to. And this roadway is going to go pretty much like an S shape. Um, when we go further down here to the intersection of 7th and <laughs> when it comes down to, what's that? Forest. Oh, uh, 7th and Forest. We'll do some editing on this. But again, as you can see here, we're going to maintain this tree line. And when you take a look at this right here, you can see there's not much vegetation that will be removed. And then when you look back this way and turn around, you can see as far as the vegetation wise, once we remove that, that's not going to have such a huge negative impact to where it's going to completely change um, the aesthetics, the look of this entire road segment. Now again, you have the swale. You have the utility line, you have the roadway, then you have three foot of shoulder. Again, no trees are going to be impacted on this section. The only tree that we're looking at is one dead tree that is over by the 1887 schoolhouse. If there's any way we can protect that tree, we definitely will. When we get to this intersection, we're going to start moving this way with the roadway, slightly. It's not going to be a direct curve like people would think, but we will be moving it this way again, not only to make it fair and equitable for everybody, but what we also want to do is make sure that we maintain all that vegetation that is on the north side of the road. Now currently, when the roadway, or when this, um, when the stormwater comes down this roadway, this has a hump in it to where it currently moves this way into this small little swale area. So what we're going to do is, if approved, we would start here, which is the actual right of way, and we would do about 14 feet and create a linear swale system right here. That would be able to capture not only the stormwater from that runs from this, but also it would act as you know catching stormwater from this area as well. And they're going to be uh, connected by pipes that will actually connect across the street uh, to the swell system. Now the reason why you want to make sure that the swell systems are on the same side is because the road pitch is going to be on the same side, is going to be in one direction and it won't flip to another direction. And also for maintenance, it's going to make it much easier. So once we get to this area here, again, this is where the roadway sways a little bit. And again, the reason for that, we want to protect this as much as possible. Because again, you know, the vegetation, the look, the feel, the charm is what we want to make sure that we're maintaining. So when we take a look at it, the actual swale system will start right here. So it's not going to have an impact. So you go 14 feet, and the actual uh, 14 feet and the 6 feet would pretty much bring you about, I believe it was, at or around right here which pretty much lines you up with exactly what the road is right now. And then reversely, when you come over here, it would be right here with the roadway. So your roadway would come right here. And if you look at that tree right there, we've spoken to the neighbors and we've spoken to the tree board. 
that tree is dead and it has to come out. So again, unless a tree is invasive or it's dead, we will remove it. Any other tree that we can hopefully protect and save, we definitely will. But if you stand right here and take a look at this way down, it's pretty much a clear shot all the way to Fernwood until we get to another oak that we're gonna save as well. So right here, we save all of this, the swale system on this side, and then you have a three foot corridor um, that'll be on this side of grass. Remember, it's all grass, but when you say ditch or swale, people think of dirt and that's not the case. And every time that you have an actual apron or a driveway, there'll be a culvert underneath that. What that does is two things. Number one, it gives you the ability to drive over the one and a half to two feet of the swale system. And also that pipe underneath will slow down the water flow, uh, flow so it'll actually have time to perk in those little uh, sections. By percolation, I mean it has time to actually drain into the ground so it's not a straight flow and running uh, fast and furious through the actual um, um, structure that's at the very end of it. So again, all of this is maintained. We're not touching any of this vegetation. Once we get to this point, this is when we start moving from this way back to this way. And the reason for that, I'm not going to get into politics here, but right behind that Biden Harris sign is a really nice oak tree. So we're making sure that we protect that oak as much as possible. The one tree that has to come out in order for us to achieve this is that camper tree, which is in the basin. So again, we're moving this way and we're going this way. And as I said before, the road width pretty much stays the same type of road width, which is about 18 feet. You know, in some sections it gets to 15 to 16, but the majority of it is between 20 um, and maybe 16 feet. So we're only talking about one or two feet here or there. Over here we have an existing swale system. The actual swale system is actually going to be moved now when we do that S to over here. And you can see the pipes right here already that are existing. So what we're going to do is we'll come back around because now we want to save that tree that's over there. So the only tree that's coming out is this camper and that dead one that's back there. We come this way with the swale system and the roadway. Save that tree there. So the swell's right here. We have the um, uh, apron right there. Right here is the six foot utility corridor. And the roadway will start here. And then right here, which is three feet off of this tree. So if you come down here and measure three feet from this tree, you'll see that the roadway maintains the exact same dimensions as it is right here. So again, the balance of this is that we're using 44 feet of right of way on 7th. We're utilizing some of the forest to capture some of that stormwater off of 7th at the very uh, north of the forest. And then when you come down here, again, we're swaying it a little bit by maintaining the three foot shoulder of grass, 18 foot of dirt road, 6 foot for water, and not only water, but you're going to have uh, fire flow protection and fire hydrants, and then a low grade swale system so it's easy to maintain, easy to mow, so on and so forth. It doesn't negatively impact the look, the feel, or the charm of this street. Now, if Travis, if you can turn around again, and I'll show you in the back. All of this vegetation stays. We're not widening it to knock out any of these. Again, the only vegetation that's impacted is way up there by Main Street where you have those six or seven uh, areas of just some high vegetation. Don't know the name of the 
um, bushes, but um, I don't speak tree, but uh, I know some of you do. But anyway, th that's what it is for the 7th Avenue project. Maintaining the street at 18 feet, uh, adding storm water, and again, this is just for this project. The reason that we need to maintain the 18 feet, 3 foot shoulder, um, is because we have to match federal guidelines in order for us to keep that money from that federal grant. But for that, the town can come up with whatever it wants as far as a uh, standard. But that money is coming out of the taxes, it's coming out of your pocket to pay for that project, not the feds. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off right now and then we'll move over to uh, Butler Street. Okay, now we're on Butler Street. Okay, and as you can see, we have 7th. Behind us, we have actual Fernwood Park. And then here we have is Butler Street. When you look at the actual right away for Butler Street, the right away actually starts. this line. Again, when you look at the 44 feet that we're using, we wanted to be fair and make sure that it was eight and a half or eight to eight and a half feet uh, from this line on either side to make sure that we're fair and equitable to everybody. But again, we can move one way or the other depending upon trees, environmentally, environmentally sensitive areas, and so on and so forth. But you can see the structure here, so we need to get the stormwater to this structure right here. So when you come over here, and Travis will come over here after I'm done talking. Um, this is where the actual swale system starts. Remember, it's a swale system with a max depth of about one and a half to two feet, which again is probably this, but not at this grade. Um, it's easily maintained, it's easily mowed. And again, when you come through this sight line, you'll see that everything that is grass right now will be grass after this project is completed. And then when you come over here, you'll have the six foot utility corridor. Again, when Travis goes over there and shows you the line, and then when it comes over here and shows you the line, this six foot actually matches up with most of your mailboxes already. So the grass you see here today is the grass that you'll see after this project. Now what Travis is showing you is a direct line of before you get to the um, swale system and then here once we get to here you point the camera this way and what you'll see is uh, a large oak tree we're saving that oak tree no trees are coming down in this project so we want to again I'll repeat that no trees are coming down in this project and on 7th there's a camphor and then there's one dead uh, tree that's coming down we're gonna look at one of the trees that's actually on the 1887 schoolhouse site but if we can save it we will um, but you can see that the grass actually maintains the exact same dimension. Then underneath every one of these aprons when we walk this way will again be a culvert, so it'll be a pipe underneath which will slow down that water flow, it'll back it up, it'll percolate, so there's not a huge rush because this is the uh, structure that's going to be accepting the stormwater from 7th and accepting the stormwater from Butler. Now over here, when you look at this line, which is white, it actually lines up with the roadway pretty nicely. This is actually where the right of what the, the roadway is going to start. So pretty much nothing's changing right here with the actual start of the roadway. When we get to over here, this is the end of the roadway. And when Travis comes on this side and looks through the roadway, you'll see that it matches up perfectly, again, with what the existing roadway is. And then we still have, again, eight to nine feet on this way to make sure that we can, we can pretty much push some areas where we can to protect trees and to protect what people perceive as their yards. Um, but we're actually reducing this roadway by a, you know, average minimum of two feet. So again, we're not widening the roadway, we're actually reducing the roadway. So this will be all grass right here, all the way down.
example of what it may look like if approved. This right here, these timbers line up perfectly with the edge of right away. So what you see here is pretty much what you'll see at the end of the project. It's grass. You'll see a little bit of a, 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 a swale, but again, the, with the um, slope and the depth would be one and a half to two feet. So what you see now today is pretty much what you're gonna see once the project is done. And they'll have aprons on these to where an actual pipe will be underneath. And as you can see over here on this side as well, we have area where we may be, may be able to go ahead and push it a little bit. Um, the water's gonna be on this side, um, so we wanna make sure that we try to keep that as straight as possible. But again, we have some fluctuation area where we can push it a little bit over to the west. Now, a really good point I wanna make is when you stand right over here, and any layperson can see it, is that stormwater not only comes from the roadway, but it comes from adjoining properties. As you can see from up here, a lot of these properties are angled this way. The stormwater that hits their driveways and hits their grass areas are coming into the actual roadway. And so that's what we're, one of the reasons that we need to maintain that as much as possible. And we are gonna hold those responsible that aren't maintaining their stormwater responsible through code enforcement action. Um, so either, you know, whether they filled it in or they amended it, we need to make sure that they are uh, maintaining the one inch off of their property. Uh, and if they're not, we're gonna make sure that they maintain that. Um, but over here, the plan for the swale system actually starts section of uh, 7th and Fulton. Everything north of here will be a two-foot curve, a concrete curve, and that's it. You'll have a three-foot shoulder, 18-foot of dirt roadway, and then a two-foot curve going all the way up to that stop sign. Again, as you see, all these trees will be maintained and nothing is coming down. Now, if you come again this way, it's pretty much free and clear. And you know, with the plans, with the concept plans that we're proposing on Tuesday night, um, and the fears that people have, um, we heard you, we listened to you, and we've manipulated that plan to where using the least amount of um, um, right away as possible, and we're meeting the minimum guidelines as possible in order for us to help, you know, pay for these projects. Because right now, with your current assessment. We only have about $130,000 to $150,000 that we can use for projects. And to put that into perspective, for this one project, we would probably have to wait four to five years to fund that. And in the meantime, in those four to five years, other projects are getting worse and worse and worse. And again, even though they're getting worse, we still don't have the money to pay for them once we fix this problem. So again, we have to utilize federal funds state funds and other grant monies to make sure that we're help supplementing these uh, projects or the cost of these projects so we're not having to increase your assessment or your taxes. Now if you turn around and take a look this way, again you can see we're maintaining the roadway. It's actually going to be two foot smaller. You're going to have grass on either side and you'll have water, uh, potable water, a six inch line with um, fire hydrants and then you're gonna have that 14 foot swell so hopefully this answers a lot of those questions uh, we'll be posting this prior to the meeting and if you have additional questions John Fitzgibbon and I will be discussing it with you at 645 uh, on uh, Monday October 12th 645 at zoom and if you need the contact information just go to our website uh, go to our Facebook page and it's on there everybody's welcome uh, I know a lot of people you know, are hearing that we're widening roadways here and there. These are the, this project and the Bessie project are the only two that are funded through a grant right now. Um, again, unless it's funded by a grant, 
the council can come up with whatever width they want. So if you live on 3rd, 4th, you know, 6th, uh, any other roadway can be manipulated as long as we pay for it. But if we want a grant system, we need to at least um, utilize the minimum standards. Again, I'm Robert Smith. I think everybody has my phone number. If not, it's 407-797-5004. Uh, it's a hot day, sorry that I'm sweaty. I want to thank Travis Mathias, and I also want to thank, um, you know, Alicia Miller. I want to thank all the residents that have come out and outreach to us to let us know what their concerns are. That's what this community is about. Uh, we want to make sure there's a happy medium. Uh, we've talked to, you know, Tom Troop, to Don, everybody. You know, we're not here to make everybody happy, but we're here to listen, and we're trying to accommodate whatever we can and compromise where we can. Um, and that's the job of staff. And hopefully you recognize that. And I know town council has a tough decision to make, um, but you know, be rest assured, again, with the designs that and, and the concepts that we have planned right now, I hope it accomplishes all the comments that you guys have had, uh, whether it's on Facebook or direct comments that you made to us. Uh, and then we'll you know, make sure that we create a project that you're gonna be happy with. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday night at 645.